Hello, 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 hello. Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Evening stream. Evening stream. <clears throat> yes, welcome. If you if you're with me earlier on today, <clears throat> you know I was doing some of my post shading, post shading, pre shading, uh, and I managed to get pretty much four pieces done. Yeah, yeah. So I didn't get a lot done. I got them all shaded, and then I got some pre shading done on post shading on them. And we got a little bit done. But we had a good time. So I'm carrying on tonight. Get a bit more done. Welcome, welcome. If you didn't watch this uh, this morning show. Uh, this is the first of probably many live stream sessions to come. Uh, I've decided to set up a proper live stream for Gumplers because going forward, there's always a time in a Gumpler build when I'm doing tedious stuff that's really, 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 really boring, like decals or uh, denubbing or prepping parts, or in this case, taking a billion parts and doing some post shading on them. So yeah, there's always a good time. It's always a good time then to have some company while you're doing it because I get bored very easily. So I've started up this Gumpler Times thing, uh, specifically for this build, but going forward in the future, I've got a tickly nose already, god damn it. Going forward in the future, I'll just do these whenever I'm doing any kind of Gumpler build, because there's always parts of a build, even if I'm doing a full video build series, there's always parts of a build where, you know, I'm spending 12 hours doing something that I'm not filming because I've already filmed like a two minute segment. I'm saying, right, now I'll go and get the rest of that done. And then I go off for three days and do all the dry, all the denubbing or all the dry brushing and stuff. And it's just time then that you're not getting any content from me. So I will hang out with you guys while we're doing it. It'll give me someone to talk to. You guys can have something. You can have my dulcet tones in the background. And uh, it's just something for me to do. So we'll have lots of these going forward. Now for this particular build, this is George's um Sazabi Master Grade Sazabi version car version Shanghai Dragons version Borderlands I've got weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks of work to do I've got all the post shading to do here I've got outlining got chipping I've got decals got tons of stuff so there's lots of scope for lots of these live streams only gonna be a quick live stream this evening it's now what half nine uh probably only go for an hour or so maybe an hour and a half not too late because I did one this morning or this afternoon we're just going to carry on uh, have a quick look at the chat. I won't go through the usual introductions because you will have seen it all this morning. Uh, but as always, if you're watching this and you can't see the chat here, do feel free to join the chat because uh, that's the whole point of this stream is to give me people to talk to. Uh, Earl D was the first in saying, Gandalf, where are you? I'm here, little hobbit. Gandalf, where the hell are the car keys? Don't know. Who do you think I am, Magneto? <laughs> yes, I like that. Uh, let's have a look. Snowman is in. Welcome back, Snowman. He was here earlier on. Uh, Jamie Bone is in. Uh, Jamie asked a good question. Is what's the best way to do pre-shading with a paintbrush for a 148 scale Sea Fury? And I, I put a link in the chat for my how to do uh, pre-shading without without an airbrush. It's basically doing what I'm doing here, which is post-shading, uh, just doing dry brushing. But it does say, I'll take a look, but the main colour is extra dark sea grey, so I guess I'd have to find something darker than that. It depends. If your object you want is uh, a dark grey colour, let's say in your case dark sea grey, the way I do my post shading with a brush is I take a base color, like for example, these parts here, these parts are painted with Avalanche Sunset, which is that color. I go over them with a shade or a wash, in this case, a shade of a dark brown color, which is Avalanche Sunset. And then I go back over with the first color again to build up the highlight areas and leave the, the darker areas in the recesses. And then I do further highlight coats of lighter and lighter colors. Now, if the color you're starting with is already quite dark, uh, like say dark sea grey, it may well be that perhaps if you do a wash of a black colour, maybe some black ink with some, um, put some black ink into some uh, glaze medium and make a shade of your own. If it's a very dark grey colour, dark bluey grey like sea grey, do a black wash over the top. That might be enough. Although if your colour is actually so dark that that doesn't really make any difference, what it's actually worth doing is starting out with a lighter colour. What do I mean by that? Well, for example, what you could do, um, like I say, for example, my colour choices for this. Uh, let's have a look. Let me get me yellows because I'll show you what colours I'm going to use. It was Avalanche Sunset was the base colour. I did a wash of Agrax Earth Shade. Then I went over with Agrax with Avalanche Sunset again. The dry brush. Then I'll go over with the dry brush of Phalanx Yellow because it's a brighter yellow. This will be the highlight colour for the middle of panels to give it the highlight. Now, if you and then I might do some bits with some uh, dawn yellow later on. So you go from dark to light. However, if you're starting with a dark colour, what you might want to do is, for example, imagine these were your. Let's say, let's say this was sea grey. What you might do is actually start with your middle colour. So start with the middle colour. Uh, how would you do this? You could start with the middle colour. Do a black wash to take it to get really dark, then come back in with your dark sea grey, 
just to build up the centre of panels to get the lighter area. Then go over with this colour again, dry brushing to get another highlight back, and then go over with your lighter colour. You really want your dark sea grey and then maybe two lighter colours getting lighter and lighter. Similar colours but lighter each. And then one darker colour, which in my case is the shade. But you might make the sea grey the base colour. So you can start with the middle colour and work your way around. You have to do some practising on some spares bits of plastic. But there will be a way to do it. As long as you've got really technically three different shades. Three different strengths of colour, so blood dark, medium and light, and then a dark shade of some sort, whether it's black. Or you could even start with your medium colour, so that's this is your dark sea grey, remember? It's the colour you want it to be. You could start with your medium colour, and then do a, make a shade with some glaze medium, some Lamian medium or Vallejo glaze medium, and your darker colour, your, your dark sea grey. Make a shade out of that, and then put that all over it, and then dry brush this over, and then go in with a lighter colour again. So there's plenty of ways you can expect. You have to do some testing and with 148th kit like that. You don't want to you don't want to dive straight in with it with some test colours and make a mess of it because that'd be sadness. So do some tests on some spare bits first. It's always worth having a crappy old five pound Airfix kit around just to do tests and things on. Uh, but some combination of that. So like I said in the comment, you'll need to figure out the colour specifically for yours. Um, you might have to tweak it a bit because you're starting with a dark colour. But that video will tell you the physical how to do it. Like you know. Dark colour, shade, dark colour, medium colour, light colour. It's fairly straightforward. And make sure to get some, some good brushes. If you've got some old Citadel base brushes, these are really nice. But it will take you a long time. They're quite smooth, but it takes you a long time. So get some good dry brushing brushes. <sighs> so if I use dark sea grey, then null null, then a lighter grey blue colour. Would that work? It would, yes. As long as the dark sea grey is not so dark that null null doesn't darken it down a bit. You want the null null to <clears throat> darken it down. So you do your dark sea grey, then your null oil, uh, and then your dark sea grey dry brushed over the top, just in the centre of panel, so you've still got the dark shadow around the edge. That's the idea of leaving the shadow around the edge um, of panel. So for example, here you've got a panel there. What I might do is dry, is dry brush this bit, but just not go right towards the edge of that panel line there, so it just retains the darkness, because this has had the wash on it. <clears throat> uh, and if, if that, that might work, that and then go with your lighter colours again. That might well work. <clears throat> It just depends how much darker null oil is to, <coughs> excuse me, your dark sea grey. Like I say, if your dark sea grey is pretty dark, null oil might not make much difference. In which case, it might be worth starting with a lighter colour and maybe making a wash out of the dark sea grey or the null oil that way. Uh, but have a play with it. Have to do some testing on some spare bits first. All right, who else have we got in chat? <coughs> I do apologise, got throatiness already. Uh, let's have a look. I had uh, I have my dinner. I had curry for my dinner. Uh, beef madras with half and half rice and chips. Oh yes. And then I had to brush my teeth. And there's nothing worse than brushing your teeth after a curry. It doesn't it doesn't go well. Uh, let's have a look. Who else? Alzric nine thousand. Ooh, surprise live stream. Yes. Another one. Uh, do do do. Tom Rickliffe. I bet I end up with an Optimus Prime when the willpower gives out. I like the dawn yellow. Says Tom Rickliffe. Yes, the dawn yellow is a really nice color. What I'll probably do with this. I probably won't do much dry brushing with this as a highlight, but this might be what I use for... I've actually forgotten how I did it on the little vehicle. I'll have to go back and watch my own video. But I think I'm doing this as uh, a chipping colour, but a very, very light, thinned down chipping colour, I think. I think... Did I give you all the wrong colours there, didn't I? Anyway, I gave Jamie all the wrong colours. These are the colours I'm going to use for this. So, Avalanche Sunset is the base coat. That's been airbrushed on. Then, earlier on... Today, I gave it a coat of Agrax shade. Now I'm at the stage of going back over with the Avalanche Sunset, dry brushing this over the surfaces to, to bring back the highlight, but leave this in the shade, in the darkened recesses. Then once that's done, I'll do a dry brush of Ur Uriel Yellow. I hate this name. I can't pronounce it. I can't say it. Uriel Yellow. Uh, and then I'll do a little bit of Phalanx Yellow, a tiny bit. Uh, and then the, the Dawn Yellow, that is for a very thin down chipping coat later on. So yes, I've got my own colours wrong. I've got so many different colours, it's ridiculous. Right. Uh, Muha, two streams, one day I think I'm dreaming, says Muha. Uh, I'll be doing a lot of these streams because I've got a lot of work to do on this kit and a lot of it is um, just this kind of tedious sitting for hours and hours on my own work. So I'll be streaming a lot because I need you guys to keep me sane. Do -do 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 -do. The dark suit guy used was to me. It's not too dark and it's not too light. That might work then. I say, give it, give it a try on a test piece. Get some dark sea grey on there first and then give it a coat of null oil and just see, have just some dark sea grey and some null oil on top of dark sea grey and just see the difference. If it's a bit darker, if it's nice and dark, then that's probably a win. It doesn't have to be massively dark. If you look at that, and that doesn't really come out on camera, but that's 
uh, they had the Agrax Earth shade, and that's untouched. So it's not massively darker, but it's a bit darker after shade. It doesn't have to make it black. It just needs to be obviously different so it can act like a shadow coat. Because unlike a pre-shade coat where you're putting in the darkness and then controlling the paint that goes on top to keep the shadow showing, here you're adding the shadow at the end. So um, I did actually call, I talked about it a little bit earlier in the earlier streams. So if you get a chance, go and have a have a watch of the earlier stream. Uh, so it means four more episodes and live streams. Hello. Oh no, I've got tons and tons of. I've got. This pre-shading stuff's going to take me about a week anyway. I've got all the out... I'm not going to stream when I do the outlining, but... Uh, I'll be streaming when I do this. I'll be streaming when I'm still doing this in about three days' time. I'll be streaming when I do the decals. Uh, I'll probably stream when I've got the chipping to do. I've got loads of stuff to do. Loads and loads of things. I kind of estimated there's probably about still five or six weeks worth of stuff to do here. So, yes, we shall see. Uh, now, someone did ask earlier on about George's uh, Sazabi group build. This, if you remember, this is a Patreon exclusive build, although this, these live streams aren't exclusive. This is a Patreon exclusive build because it's, uh, it's George's, it's going to be, I'm doing this model for George. It's his reward for being a, a lovely patron. So I'm building him a uh, skill level five build. It's going to be a Overwatch themed Borderlands style paint job on this with a little bit of diorama and a figure and uh, take this off the stick for a minute so what was I going to say I was going to say something I've got no idea what it was it was probably very important and I've absolutely got no idea what it was uh, nope can't remember. oh yes so but yes um, but George decided to do a group build because he's got one he's got about six of these kits I'm going to have to not use this brush it's still a bit clunky from earlier uh, George decided to start a live uh, a group build in the boom hut. So if you're not in the boom hut, go and join the boom hut. Uh, we've got any mods? You've not got any mods, and to post a link, have we? No, never mind. Uh, if you're not in the boom hut, go and join the boom hut. But yes, we are doing a group build. Uh, but the deadline was kind of like this week or next week or something. However, nobody's well, very few people have actually finished theirs. Some of you have, but most of you haven't. So a few people are saying, can we? Are we going to get an extension on the group build? Because uh, George is giving away a prize. I think it's the real grade new Gundam. I think I, I, I could be wrong. So don't take that as red. But George has offered a prize at the end of it. However, the deadline is like in one or two weeks now. I'm nowhere near finished on mine. And George hasn't actually really done much on his either. A lot of people have actually hardly got very far because of various reasons over the last sort of couple of months. So I don't know what George's plan is doing. I'm not actually involved in that group build. Not really. It's, it's George's baby. Um, it's not following my build at all. So when the group build is finished, I might not necessarily finish mine. Or I might finish mine long before the group build finishes. You never know. Uh, but I believe George is going to post something up in the boom hut. So, because there's a lot of people I say who haven't actually got had a chance to finish it, including George. But I, I basically said to George, it's probably best don't don't base your deadline, your new deadline. If you do, if you change the date, if you extend it, don't base it on my build because I don't know how long it's going to take really. Uh, so George is, I think he's going to post something up in the boom up for you anyway. We shall see what he says, but it's George's baby. So, hey, George. Uh, He's on it, Tom. Don't worry. Tom says, inquiry minds want to know. He's on it. He's sorting it out. Snowman says, I've just had a massive spider run across me barefoot. <laughs> eh. See, I've got an advantage at the minute because I've got... Because I get I get sore feet. My feet are... I get a lot of pain in my feet. So, when it's warm, if I sit barefoot for a long time, if I'm barefoot, my feet, if I'm barefoot for a long time, my feet hurt. So... I managed to get myself, and it's an absolute godsend, I got myself a couple of really thick, flumpy, microfiber noodle, like, bath mats, basically. They're just like little little rugs that go in your bathroom. And the big, flumpy noodles, like microfiber noodles. But they're brilliant, because they're so soft. So I've got a couple just put under my workbench. And then when I'm working on the computer, of course, I put them under the computer desk. And if I'm... The rare moments I get to spend on the Xbox, I put them under where the Xbox is, so I can put my feet there. So I'm not you know, I'm get, not getting hurt, hurty feet after a day sat at the workbench or at the computer. And uh, the advantage is that they're so flumpy and noodly that if a spider ran across my foot, I wouldn't even notice because it's just this lovely, noodly, tickly feeling on my feet. 
keeping them soft and squashy. Do 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 do. Downside of being old now, you say. You get you get old and suddenly everything hurts, everything aches. Don't need the pressure, her fox. Uh, I don't know what you mean, dude. Oh no, I mean of the group build. No, not at all. I was never actually part of the group build. The group build was just some, just something for fun. It's just while I happened to be building this for George anyway, I was never actually building to it. And I don't think George actually set it, the original deadline based on my build at all. Because this build should have been done like months ago. <laughs> George should have this now in a cabinet in his house. And Snowman says he's going to let his lizard get it. Yeah. There are at least three big spiders in my house. The one in the bathroom is the size of a dog, says Osric 9000. Oh. Yeah, we've had a few spiders this year. Because it's been it's been a reasonable summer. So we've had a few spiders. I just find them and throw them out. Just throw them outside. But the weird thing is, like, normally you get the house spiders. And you all know house spiders. They've got the big long legs and they move about a thousand miles an hour for that far. They go, and then they stop and rest for a minute. And then they move again. And you see them coming a mile away and you just throw them out. But lately this year, we've had different spiders. They're like little dark, they're like house spiders, but with shorter legs. And they're kind of smaller and rounder. And I don't know what they are. They've never seen them before. Really weird. You just throw them out anyway. Except they are evolving to climb up glass. In the old days, in the olden days, you get a spider in the glass with a bit of card and you'd turn the glass up and it'd just be at the bottom of the glass going like that, trying to get out. Nowadays, I ain't having none of that nonsense. You catch a spider in the glass, that thing's climbing up the grass and batting at the card on the top of the glass and it's like, oh, get off. No. Right, so this is the back of the leg. If you didn't watch earlier on, I was explaining that uh, I am painting this in the Shanghai Dragons colour scheme, uh, which is the, if you look, I haven't got the images here. Um, by the way, is the sound and video okay? I hope everything's sounding okay. I'm painting this Sazabi to look like Diva's mech from Overwatch in the Shanghai Dragons livery. So it's not going to be a hundred percent match. Uh, and on her leg, you've got she's got yellow armor at the back of the leg, at the fr uh, back of the leg, and red armor at the front. But on this kit, the split between the two parts is down the front and back, not down the side. So I've had to airbrush, mask these off, and airbrush them separately. So it's, well, that's, that's one piece basically. I fear nothing except spiders, says Tom. Uh, says uh, Snowman. Yeah, spiders. It's not just not right. Thankfully, I've never had a spider run across my workbench. Oh, well, I should tell a lie. I tell a lie. I was filming the other day and a spider did come across my workbench. But it was a tiny... Oh, that's too small. It was a tiny, tiny little um, money spider. And it was just pootling. I had all the bits on this on this uh, scruffy cutting mat. And it was just pootling about. And I'm like, dude, you have to go outside now. So I caught him and I threw him outside. Don't mind little tiny spiders. Uh... Need a slightly bigger brush for these bits because I did this before and it was tedious. It was tedium in extremis. Is it Sunday already? Says a terrorist. No, no, no. These are gumpless dreams. I've got lots, lots of stuff to do on George's Cesarbe, and I really need you guys to keep me company because it's all the tedious dry brushing bits that's going to take forever. And it's going to take me hours and hours and hours and hours, and I'd rather have some company. So we're going to have lots of these streams going forward. Because I need somebody to keep me keep me trucking. Do, 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 do. I mean normally I would just, you know, sit and listen to podcasts and stuff. And that that's that's fine. But I figured, you know, hey, while I'm in the middle of this build, because it is a Patreon exclusive build, the downside is that while I'm doing a Patreon build, I don't have a lot of scope to do any other non Patreon stuff. So content for you guys who aren't patrons is uh, few and far between. So I figured, that, you know, if you if you follow me because of my Gumpler builds, you've only seen Warhammer stuff. <laughs> it's because I'm not going to need Gumpler apart from this. So it's just a nice little thing to give you guys something. While I'm doing these bits, which would just be me sitting listening to podcasts, I might as well just hang out with you guys and give you something rather than weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks of not doing any more video content apart from the odd bit because I'm still doing a Patreon exclusive one. I'm giving you something. I know it's live streams. It's not like a, a video tutorial series. But they're coming, don't worry. Once this is done, 
Uh, it's time for the perfect grade millennium falconums, and that will be a. That's not a Patreon build, so that's open. That's an e-models build, so that's available to everybody in the world. You will all get to watch me get past episode six, and maybe, maybe not, but you'll all get to watch me get past the cockpit. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so that's that done. That's quite subtle. I didn't do a lot on there, but I left a little bit of the dark sort of staining here just to make it look interesting. There's not really a lot of panel lines for it to... The shade hadn't really sunk around any edges of panel lines, so it's more just of a slight discoloration. It's going to be weathered anyway, so it doesn't matter if it's a little bit weird. Uh, we have uh, Common Road Junction. Hey, guys. Welcome, Common Road Junction. Uh, I like spiders, but wasps are killed on sight, says Osric. Uh, LD says custom fees, so my Epion commission will be here Friday with my PS. Cool. Six episode Falcon says Jamie. I can promise you uh, about the Millennium Falcon. I can say one thing: the final episode will be episode six. I'll say no more. I shall say no more. But the final episode will be episode six. <laughs> I have a plan. Now I did think about doing for the Falcon build. I did think about doing silly a cappella theme tune, like I did for the Eagle Transporter. But, you know, if I did that, if I did an a cappella version of the Star Wars theme, within milliseconds of me uploading the video to YouTube, Disney would basically shut down eModels and my YouTube channel and sue both of us into oblivion. So, that's not going to happen. To quote Master Chief, that's not going to happen. Sir, finishing this fight. So yeah, so no no a cappella silly theme tune, I'm afraid, for the Falcon build. Because you don't mess about with the House of Mouse. Like them or not, you don't mess around with them. Because they will break you with no hassle. Do -do 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 -do. Have you seen that Japanese chap scribing the Sazabi, says Earl D. Yeah, if you're in the boom hut. I don't know if it was, if it was uh, you that posted the post up, dude. But somebody posted up a, a, a link to a video of a guy. Of course, skill level Japan here. Who is making the Sazabi, but he is basically scribing panel lines all over it and adding lots of greebles to it, like little lumps and bumps and things, adding armor paneling and stuff that isn't there normally. And it just makes me feel like I'm just with my work, it just makes I look at it, I watch it and think, my god, I'm just banging two rocks together, Jesus. It's one of those things, but then I look at it and think, well, he must have taken like two or three days just to add this one particular greeble to one shoulder. To one pauldron because he could have sculpted it himself and then thought yeah but he's got to do two of those and given how i get so despondent just denubbing for a week i can't imagine doing that that's why i love these japanese builders they have the dedication to sit there and work on something for like five years and it's just tedious grind and yet by the end of it there's a just a beautiful piece of work they've done just um, and you're a gog but it's where they get the perseverance i do not know i haven't got the sticking power to do that at all do -do 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 -do. quoting master chief now microsoft is coming for youtube that's not going to happen i i am a monument to all your sins I can't really do the. I used to be able to when I was younger. I used to be able to do a good grave mind voice. I can't now. I can't do it anymore. I haven't got the. I don't smoke anymore for a start, which doesn't help. Now, how does the line go now? This one is but flesh and steel, and has his mind occluded. This one is just flesh and faith, and is the more deluded. I can't do the voice anymore. I can do it quietly, but not not live and loud. Live and loud on Sky One. I don't care if it's God's own anti son of a bitch device. To quote Sergeant John Johnson, legend in his own lifetime, Sergeant Johnson, Halo. Yeah, I used to love Halo. Doodly -doo. I did uh, 
when I first got into video games. I mean, I, I played. We had a Pong machine in the nineteen in nineteen seventy six. I mean, that's how long I've been playing video games. But when I really first got into video games was when Mama Fox got uh, Papa Fox bought for Mama Fox a, a PlayStation Two. I mean, yeah, how's that? Hey, let's buy. I'll buy my wife a console and not buy one for my kid. <laughs> yeah, never mind. I was I was twenty two at the time. It doesn't really matter. Uh, but whatever I was, I wasn't twenty two. I was much older than that. 30 odd but anyway yeah so uh, Mum Fox got a PlayStation 2 and I, I played Half-Life and then I got myself an Xbox and I was smitten but I used to play first person shooters and Halo was my thing for years Halo playing the campaign over and over and over and over and over and over going around to my mate's house just to have two Xboxes and two TVs and play uh, LAN LAN Halo was fantastic Snowman's going for his dinner soon mm, Snowman we need to know what you're having you can't just say that you have to tell us what you're having Oh, I thought I'd missed the stream. Hey, y'all, says Beck. Uh, you missed the stream this morning or this afternoon, but you haven't missed the stream this evening because there's two streams. There's going to be a whole mess of streams coming up in the coming days. So everybody will see something. Toad in the hole. So, oh, that's right. You did say that earlier. I want to take it back. I do apologize. Apologies. Now, I am being quite careless here. I'm not I'm not being particularly careful. This is remember, I'm not doing any weathering. This is purely just setting down the base coat for the for the for the armor. So if I'm a little rough and ready, it's fine because I just want to get some some highlights and some low lights, some shade and some not shade. There's not a lot of shade on these bits. Oh, itchy nose! God damn it! That cave is not a natural formation. Duh. Yeah, we're on Halo quotes now. I'm sorry. We're on Halo quotes, and that's the way it is. Robert Taylor says, hello, everyone. Welcome, Robert. Welcome, welcome, welcome. As always, if you are watching this uh, and you're not in the chat, do come and join in the live chat. Unless you like Space Hamster, it's nearly bedtime, in which time, in which case, you've got to go to bed soon. Sleepy times. Sleepy times. Uh, yeah, but if you are watching, the chat's here. I, I nearly pointed to over my screen, but you can't see that. The chat's here, but if you want to join the actual live chat, uh, you need to be on YouTube. So if you're watching this embedded somewhere like Facebook or Twitter or anywhere else where I've posted a link and you can watch the video, Patreon and places, um, just click on the link in the post and that will take you to the YouTube page where this stream is because that's where you want to be. You can join in the live chat and have fun because the whole point of this stream and the streams to come in the coming weeks uh, are just to keep me company while I'm doing the tedious bits like the dry brushing and bits like that. So you guys are my lifeline. You're keeping me keeping me sane. Okay, so make sure I get that paint on my finger onto the model. Now you can see here I've not fully painted this top bit. A uh, very good reason for that. That's because that's going to be a totally different colour. That's going to have a black and white checker pattern on it when it's painted. So I don't need to paint that yet. So that's going to do us. It needs to be a rough, a rough colouring on here. I'm not too worried. There's got other highlights to come. You can see there's like a, a little sort of dark patch here where the the shade is gathered. Now bear in mind you're seeing this a bit brighter and overblown than real life it's a bit darker than that this whole thing looks a bit darker but you can see there it's got uh, a bit of a line but that's fine that's fine i was saying in the stream earlier on today the trick to doing anything like this like either weathering or this kind of pre-shading or post-shading is to not overthink it and not be stressed too much about what's realistic and what's not i gave the example earlier on of some streaking on a real van that wasn't vertical it was at a funny angle it was on the back of a door and it was like that and you think, well, hang on, that's not how liquid flows. Liquid fl doesn't flow at 37 degrees from that from, from vertical. Uh, but clearly the van had been parked at a funky angle. But if I just painted that, people would have thought I was used to be like, what are you doing? That's not how that's not how shading uh, streaking works. So don't overthink it. Just go with the flow. Oh, I've got oh, splodging out paint. Uh, I need to I'll just, just get rid of this tissue. I'll clean that up because I'll just get it on my fingers and then I'll get it on the kit where I don't want it. The one major downside of these silly, silly pots splurges out the other side, so you get paint on your hand. And then it's the one thing to be careful of with Citadel paint pots if you're doing anything like this, where you've got to open the pot constantly, just be careful you're not getting it on your fingers and then transferring it to the model. The number of times I've done that during dry brushing or what have you, oh, got paint on the model, transferred paint from the pot lid. 
Good morning all, and especially Scott. Welcome, welcome, Kenneth. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, oh, Scott's in. Welcome, Scott. Scott from Orkney. Uh, Robert Taylor is in. Hello, everyone. Uh, Sprue Glue Addict reminds me of a piece of Lego. Yes. Uh, see, I'm getting paint all over my... I can feel it on my... God damn it. Games Workshop, sort your nonsense out. William Rayburn. Hello, everyone. I haven't been able to catch a street in a while. I mean, I think it means stream. Welcome to autocorrect. Oh, autocorrect. Yeah, welcome, welcome. It's not a Warhammer stream. We're doing a Gumpler stream. There's going to be a lot of these over the coming weeks because I've got a lot of stuff I need to do. And having a stream going while I'm doing it just makes it more interesting for me. If you weren't in the stream earlier on, what did you, what have you had for your dinner? Or what are you? Yeah, bench and belly. If you weren't in the stream earlier and have, haven't already answered this today, bench and belly, what's on your bench? And what's in your belly or what's going to be in your belly? I had curry, beef madras with half and half. It was delightful. I now have the curry burps, which is fantastic. And I, I, I forgot that I haven't had a curry for a while. I forgot that brushing your teeth after a curry is horrible. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's not. It's not. It's not awesome. It's not good times. But you know, you just got to get them bits of beef out your teeth. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Uh, My next builds will be the uh, real grade new MG. I'll start that again. From from Dennis from LD. Uh, my real next. <laughs> wow. Hello. Fox speaking. You've been doing it for a long time. You know how to do it. My next builds will be a real grade new Gundam, a master grade Psycho Gundam, a master grade Jester, and one one hundred scale Vidar. Vidar Sassoon. The Psycho Gundam is that the the big massive black and purple one that's got like it's about eighteen foot tall or something. Or do you mean the Psycho Zaku, which has got a trillion parts? It's awesome. <laughs> Uh, do, 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 do. These might sound strange, but these painting techniques can be applied to Games Workshop stuff as well, right? Um, absolutely, these can. Uh, and if you go onto my playlists, to my channel, and go to playlists on the menu at the top, uh, there is a little sort of two or three part painting guide for the Warhammer 40k Gene Steelers Ridge Runner, or Bandit Technical as I called it. Uh, and that entire paint job was a completely a test bed for this. So I did exactly the same techniques, uh, the pre-shade, the post-shade brush shading, uh, using yellows to get the highlights and this kind of post-shading colours, and then all the chipping and stuff, because that was a test bed model to test out this Borderlands paint job before I actually did it on George's mother's hair. Look at that hair there! Look at that! Oh! That's awesome! Oh, oh! Heresy! Can I get that off? Oh, look at that, it's got trapped in the one of the layers. I don't even know if the hair's there anymore. That might just be a shade layer that's got stuck and the hair's come out, but it's like, oh little oh I think it oh do you know I don't think I can get that off now. Oh hang on. We might be onto a winner. Maybe not. Unfortunately it's a really small hair. Kenneth did say earlier on these tweezers are great for getting hairs out, and they are. It's an eyelash. It's a really tiny eyelash, but the shade has gathered around it and made an even bigger splod noise, uh, Mark. Oh, well. Well, it's not to worry, because we're going to do paint chipping and stuff anyway. So I'm going to go over this now with the dry brush. And this is what I say about happy accidents. Don't overthink things. And if something like this happens, don't panic. You don't have to strip the piece off and repaint it. We're doing weathered. We're doing battered and beaten. So what I'm doing is I'm going to be doing paint chipping and stuff. And if anything goes wrong... Like this bit here, I, I've just tried brushed over it and it's gone. It's just pretty much gone. It's, it's still there a little bit, but once you've got chipping on there as well and some weathering over the top, you won't even know that was there. So don't. if you're doing a weathered build, if you're doing a nice shiny sports car or a fighter plane or something that's got no weathering on it, then yeah, that's a strip it down and repaint it job. But the one reason I love doing weathered jobs, weathered builds, is because you can cover up your mistakes. You can hide things like that. You can build things like that into the paint job. Uh, I'm sure George won't mind a fox hair. Yeah, says Sprugloo. Yes, he's got the he's got the shadow of a fox hair. 
I'm sure there's probably other little eyelashes and things in the build, all over the place in the build that you'll find. There's always one somewhere. Uh, let's have a look. Uh, Robert Taylor says he had chimchi flavoured noodles for lunch. Nice. I need to blow my nose, wipe my nose. Uh, Space Hamsters, yeah, I'm going to go clean that airbrush and hit the sack. Have fun, everyone. Thanks for coming in, Space Hamster. Give that airbrush a damn good cleaning. Well, thank you for coming in. Oh. Uh, Earl D says, Spag Ball Bench Empty finished the high grade new today. Yes, yeah, the high new Gundam. Dishan is working on the Master Grade Charles Zaku 2. Awesome. You can't go wrong with the Zaku. Zaku's are awesome. Zaku's are great for me. Zaku's are great because Zaku's are like crappy Russian tanks. They're built out of the cheapest components. They're mass produced. They're built without love. They're not meant to be shiny fighter planes with legs like a Gundam is. So Zaku's, they're just, they're just crappy Russian tanks. So their natural environment is rusted and beaten, I think. I prefer, I like, I like that, that, that in my mind. They don't last long. They've got poor paint jobs, poor, you know, anti-corrosion and stuff. They're, they're cheap and cheerful. They're not designed to last long, so they don't put a lot of effort into them. So to me, Zaku's are like the, the workhorse grunt suits and therefore they're just like rusty and battered and poorly maintained. In my mind. In my mind. Don't do a lot on that one. That one's quite good. Uh, let's have a look. Model Maker 12. Hello all. I'm currently practicing my scribing on a spare resin piece and plan on having a steak for dinner. Yes, steak. Yes. Uh, pizza, and I have two more ro uh, remote control bodies to paint, says William Rayboard. However, he makes a terrible mistake, schoolboy error, of saying just saying pizza. You should know by now, William. The rules, the law. If you're having pizza, you have to tell us what kind of pizza. If you're having a dish that can come in multiple variants, like if you say, I'm having curry, you need to say what curry. If you're having pizza, you need to say what's on the pizza, because we need to look at it and go, oh, that sounds really nice. Or some people need to just shout at you if you have pineapple. Uh, let's have a look. Uh, Psycho Zaku confirms LD. Yeah, that is a monster, that kit. That's going to keep you busy for. Oh, wait. No, it's you. That'll keep you busy for about a day. <laughs> D or Dennis, and um, John Bias in the Boom Hut. They get through about five models. I don't know how they do. They get through about five or six builds a week or something. It's just, they say, hey, I'm just starting this new build the next day. Right, I finished it. And they look fantastic. So, yeah, Psycho Zaku for me and you will take us about a week just to put it together. I'm sure Dennis will have fully painted it in like about a day. Won't you, Dennis? <laughs> uh, but that's the thing. He does them really quick. And he goes, to, I built one, I built another one, built another one. And yeah, they're all flipping awesome. I'm jealous of anyone that can... Oh, I'm jealous of anyone that can not have paint coming out of the paint pots on their hands. It drives me nuts. Yeah, I'm jealous of anyone that can work that fast and still have good results. Uh, Stephen Hudson, welcome Stephen, says Bench fun building turning a mobile harrow into Ness from Earthbound I don't know what Ness from Earthbound is But it sounds interesting If you're in the boom hut, do post pictures uh, LD says brain fart Same to you uh, Steve Hudson also says belly kimchi fried rice Nice Currently painting an elephant, uh, M3 Stewart T55, soon to start a Master Grade Zaku 2, says Robert Taylor. Elephant. That's their big, uh, uh, what's it called? What's the word I'm looking for? It's like the British Scorpion. It's not a, it's not a tank. It's a, it's a mobile gun platform. It's a, oh, not a mounted gun. What's the word I'm looking for, people? I'll, I'll, it'll come to me. Uh, DNA proof of Fox. Oh yeah, if I'd left that hair in there, I could have scraped it out and done some kind of fraudulent nonsense with DNA in the future. He can grow a clone and have a personal painter. Yeah, but unless the clone grew up in the 1970s with like Action Man and Steve and like Bionic Man action figures and stuff, it's not going to have the same experience as me and therefore it won't be the same. Okay, that's the tip of the foot. Uh, I forgot to clean my airbrush out, says Beckstorm, after the first time I used it last week. Whole thing was jammed with primer, took ages soaking it in 99% IPA to scraping it all out. Yeah, especially with primer. Uh, the one thing with airbrushes is you should always get in the habit of 
give it a quick color change clean out uh, between colors if you're gonna like if you do some spraying and then you're gonna stop for a bit and come back later on the same day say after your dinner you can just do a quick flush out with some thinners or what have you just to clean out but at the end of the day you need to get in the habit of actually doing a full strip down and clean now a lot of people don't and that's fine if they don't want to do it they don't want to do it but I find uh, it helps you keep your airbrush in top tip top condition and also stops it avoids having to suddenly find one day that things have gone crusty and you have to do things like that with the IPA to get it out and cleaned yeah uh, so do a full strip down and clean it only takes five or ten minutes once you get the hang of it and you get into the swing of it a full strip down and clean at the end of every day's painting session and you're just golden then because then all you need to do is do that put it away and the next time you come to use it you know you can just quickly flush a little bit of thinner through just to loosen everything up make sure there's nothing in there and you're good to go it's a pain in the bum but it's worth it in the long run especially if you're doing either primer or more importantly varnishes of any kind if you do if, if you ever watch me do like my pledge multi-surface two times more shine to no more no more tears whatever the hell i can't remember what it's called now that stuff or any varnish you'll see or i'll tell you in the video that the moment i finish spraying the literal moment i finish any of that spraying i clean that i strip it down and clean it out i don't even leave it for five minutes because paints are bad enough you know you leave paint in there and you can eventually clean it out but once it's in there it's, it's a bit of a bugger to get out um but if you leave a varnish in there what you're doing is you're basically just varnishing the inside of your airbrush any residue it just turns into a solid varnish and a varnish is designed to be harder to remove than a paint so yeah especially if you're varnishing you, just, you clean that thing out straight away the moment you finish spraying even if you're going to do another color even if you're for example if your painting order for that day was do an air, uh, airbrush some varnish on something and then airbrush say a, a coat of paint on something else so that's, that might be a painting order i've got to varnish these bits here and then when i've done that i'll flush it out and i've got to put some blue paint on these other parts over here even then what i would do is do my do my gloss coating or my varnishing whatever it was strip the brush down clean it out like an end of day clean and then go and do my other painting bits and then when i finished all the rest of the painting then i will strip it down and clean it again just because a varnish is such a pain in the ass to remove if you forget it um it's just not it's not worth it so even if you're going to go off and, and, and you want to do a color change there's no such thing as a color change clean with a varnish i wouldn't risk it i'd do a full strip down even if you're going to be doing something else it's just not worth the heartache snowman is off for dinner have uh, have off for dinner have fox night all I don't think that's what you meant to say, but thanks for coming in, uh, uh, Snowman. Enjoy your noms. Enjoy your, your uh, what was it, Toad in the Hole? Bubble and Screak? One of the two. I can't remember now. Uh, tank Destroyer. No, what's the word I'm looking for? Oh, that's not what I'm looking for. Self-propelled gun, that's it. That's what I was looking for. If it is the elephant, it's a, is it like a self, it's not like a, it's like a self-propelled gun, isn't it? More than a tank. I think, I could be wrong. I know what it is, I just can't. I can see it in my in my mind of thinking. Uh, now you can see here I'm not doing anything in the inside. I haven't put any shade on the inside of these parts because A, most of them you can't see inside anyway. And B, I'm being very conscious of what I'm putting on the inside where things have to slot together. I don't want layers of paint and shade and all kinds of stuff because this is thick stuff now. And I can't afford to be having thick coats of paint on the inside of parts where they need to go together because that introduces stress and can break things. So I've got a plan for the interior areas that might need a bit of darkening later on, but that's later on. Uh, where can I put that? I'm running out of space on my bit of foam. Uh, William Rayburn says sausage, black olives, tomatoes and jalapeno. There you go. See, now we all know it was a delicious, delicious pizza. Well, it hasn't got pineapple on it, which is weird, but there you go. Uh, belly chicken madras i had i had beef madras uh says osric and bench one seven hundred scale battleships <laughs> you you sunk my battleship uh do, 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 do. roast pork sports cream spinach master grade v gundam vercar says edward leonard well i hope one of them is on your bench and the rest is in your belly but <laughs> i'm going to assume that the master grade v gundam vercar is not in your belly <laughs> but yeah the roast pork spuds and cream spinach oh that sounds good that sounds good they're making me hungry and i've already had my tea Ooh. 
Earl Deed says, George already has a clone lab in the basement. George has got a basement. I think George's basement is basically the size of what we would most call our houses. I think his basement's probably got more square footage than most of our gardens. I've got a big garden. Here in the US, is stuff to clean tools at hardware stores. Uh, Lacquer thinner gets it done though. Here in the US, it's stuff to clean. Yeah, if you if your airbrush is solvent safe, if you know for a fact your airbrush is solvent safe, then lacquer thinners you can clean out an airbrush pretty quick because lacquer thinners will get rid of anything. Um, if your brush is not solvent safe, don't even think about putting any kind of lacquer thinners through it because you'll just destroy all the seals and you'll have to replace them all. Um, lacquer thinners, they will eventually degrade your seals, but oh, look at that. Oh, oh, Games Workshop, god damn it. With your silly, stupid paint pots. Oh. How, how many years were we asking for Plastic Sisters of Battle when we got that? Half as long as we've been asking for not stupid paint pots when we still get stupid bloody paint pots. God damn it, Games Workshop. What makes dry brushing a pain in the butt? Right, where was I up to? Oh yes, I was shaking the paint and getting myself covered in paint at the same time. Duh. Uh, they are all technically self-propelled guns. But yes, I know, I know technically, but I know there are some that are actually just referred to as self-propelled guns. Uh, yes, yeah, so yeah, lacquer thinners. If your brush can take it, if it's solvent safe, then yeah, you can clean up with lacquer thinners. Just don't leave it soaking in lacquer thinners because it will eventually eat away your seals and stuff. They won't do it any favours. But for a quick clean out, they'll be fine. But yeah, lacquer thinners, they'll just clean it. But do, do be aware, of course, lacquer thinners stink. If you live in a tiny, tiny apartment with like 12 other people and a dog and, you know, kids and family and stuff, and you're in a little tiny house or apartment, you might not want to go to any lacquers because they will stink. I actually, when I used to work in a, in a detailing and like, you know, painting cars and stuff, I brought home a little bottle of proper automotive lacquer thinners because I thought I'll, get, I'll snag some of them. a little bottle like this big. I'll get some of them because they'll come in handy for this, that, and the other. So I siphoned off a little bit of the lacquer thinners we had. Proper, you know, um, UPOL lacquer thinners, automotive paint jobbies. Um, I siphoned them off and I thought that'll do. A little bottle that big. Brought it home, no problem. Uh, and then I opened the lid and I went like this literally I got the bottle I went open them went oh that smells put the lid back on within a minute there was a shout from downstairs because mama fox could smell it that's how strong lacquer smell lacquer thinners and things smell they stink proper automotive ones even worse so do keep that in mind that's why I don't spray I've got some Mr. Mr. Hobby Mr. Metal color paints that I've sprayed before and I very rarely use them but that's why I tend not to use lacquer colours. They are super durable and dry really fast when you're airbrushing. But unfortunately, I'm in a house with other people. I can't. I can't just be spraying lacquers. Even with the you know extractor fan and the window open and close the door, it still stinks. It's still just it's and it's not. It's not just a smell. The thing with lacquers is that's vol that's vox VOCs. That's volatile organic chemicals. It's it's nasty stuff. You don't want to be breathing that in for a long time. That's why when you work in a body shop, you wear a big ass respirator. Now, granted, you know, spraying it in an airbrush booth for like an hour, it's not going to be that bad, but you still wear a respirator. But the thing is, it's even if you, you know, wear a respirator and then you do your spraying and then you, you go downstairs for half an hour and you come back upstairs and your window's not open or the fumes are still going to be there. If you can smell it, it's doing you some harm. That's the trick with, with lacquers. If you can smell it, you're in trouble. So that's why I don't use them. I can't I can't guarantee good ventilation. I mean, I can guarantee it, but it's still not enough to defeat it completely. Defeat it completely. All right, there we go. Lovely. It's top bit of the arm. So if you know I'm doing this roughly, it is a very rough dry brush coat. I'm not being too delicate or precise. This really is just applying a base colour. It kind of works as a little bit of weathering as well, but it's more just about getting a base colour down. So we've got 
uh, we've done these. I now need to do all of these that you can't see because it's not on camera. So we're not even halfway there yet. Oh. So take a little break, have a quick swig of my cafe. My cafe. Let's have a look and see. See what we're doing. Uh, let's have a look. Mm -mm -mm. Good thing I got a spray can varnish, says Beckstorm. Do that outside. Uh, mobile worker, says uh, Tom Rickliffs. Dropper pots for the wind, says Asta. Yeah, because at least with the dropper pot, you can put some on a pallet and, and you know, dip your brush in that way. I mean, I, I like the idea of having a pot I can get the paint from to dry brush. It's faster than farting about the dropper bottle. I just don't like the lids. I don't like the idea that if you do anything with this more than once, it gunks the lip and paint comes out. I hate that. I'll just give that a rinse, but I'll have to hair dryer it to dry it again in a minute. Uh, the only bit I'm unsure about, says LD, about painting the Psycho Zaku big ass fuel tank. I may have to steal your dry brush style for that part. I would hold fire on that until you see how mine comes out. Because while dry brushing is good, as you saw on my um, Funko Pop, Pop uh, Angry Marine, it didn't come out well on there. It came out lumpy and bumpy, so I'm hoping it doesn't do that on this. Uh, if you're painting it weathered and battered and beaten, it'd be a good idea. If, you, if you're doing it not that better battered and beaten, airbrush may be the way to go, but we'll see. <laughs> What are Tamir Lackers like? I want to get some, but I don't know what they're like and do the let off a smell as well. Uh, I hear they're very good. Lacquer paints. There's no real bad lacquer paints. You've got things like Mr. Colour. You've got the Mr. Hobby lacquers. You've got Gaia uh, notes. They do a load of lacquers. Um, there's the Tamir ones. Lacquer paints are generally really, really thin. So you don't need to thin them down. You can use low pressure to spray them. They go on beautifully because they're so thin. They dry super fast. And they're really tough. Of all the paints you can paint your model with, they are the most durable. Um, and a lot of people use them on Gumpler because they are so durable and some of the colours are fantastic. The only real thing is, if you're going to spray them, you absolutely have to have a spray booth. You absolutely have to have um, a respirator. Not a mask, but a respirator. And you absolutely have to make sure the room is well ventilated because all lacquers will stink. All of them. There's no such thing as an, a scent-free lacquer. They all stink to high hell and if you thought enamel smelled a bit lacquers are, are, are horrible and the thing is i was painting um i had some of the mr mr hobby i've got them in the drawer over there mr hobby mr metal color lacquers and i was brush painting something for you know literally maybe a few minutes five or ten minutes and by the time i'd finished this was just brush painting from the jar uh, by the time I finished brush painting, I was woozy. It was like, oh, wow, that's just, it's such a, it's like, you know, like when you, if somebody hands you a glass of vodka and you take a sniff and you, oh, that goes straight to the back of your brain. That's what lacquers are like. It's like strong, toxic, intoxicating smell. It's really powerful. That's why you need to wear a respirator. Uh, but yeah, they are, they are really, really cool. Lacquers are awesome. They give you a fantastic finish that you're not going to match. And yes, I did see a comment about Jar Jar Binks, but I'm not reading that. Yeah, <laughs> we know all about Jar Jar Binks. Thank you very much. Whoa. Yes, uh, Jamie asks if anyone's seen the, th the theory that Jar Jar Binks is from the dark side. Yes, I'll let you guys talk about that. Uh, but yes, the, the yes they, they will, as um, Robert and Tom say, they will stink. They are horribly toxic. That's why you, I mean, you should wear a respirator, whatever paint you're spraying. If somebody says to you, you don't need to wear a respirator because it's an acrylic, that person is a complete cockwomble uh, and they will die of some horrible lung disease. Whereas you won't because you'll have a respirator. I don't care what you could be spraying water for all I care. You always wear a respirator. Because the only thing that goes into your lungs is air. That's it. Um, but yes, lacquers even more so because they're not just, you know, it's not just getting particles in your lungs or, or anything like that. It's also the vapors are highly intoxicating, highly toxic and, and you know, nasty. They're volatile organic chemicals. They're VOCs. So yeah, wear a respirator. They will stink regardless. A Lincoln Wright is the guy to watch with lacquer, says LD. Yeah, Lincoln Wright does a lot of work with lacquer paints. Brushing, and they're also nice to brush as well, because they do, again, they do dry really thin, really smooth, and really brush mark free. But it's just the smell. Like with, like say, you know, with say Tamiya paints, Tamiya regular Tamiya acrylic paints, they can be stinky sometimes. They can have a bit of a whiff to them, but that's just stinky smell. 
Whereas with a lacquer paint, and keep in mind, of course, you've got Tamiya lacquers, whereas the Tamiya acrylics, they're kind of lacquers anyway, in a lot of ways. They're not full lacquers, but they are more like lacquers than acrylics, because they're alcohol based. But uh, I need to wipe my nose again. But yeah, if you live in a small house with other people and there's not a lot of room, then I would maybe think carefully about lacquers. If you can guarantee that, because it, if if you it's, it's like I said before about open the jar of lacquers. The moment you open a pot of lacquer, people downstairs will smell it. It is that bad. Uh, and if you live in a house with a lot of people, they don't want to be smelling that all day long. It's like if I go outside and rattle can something, and then I leave it, bring it, bring it in, and put it in, in the living room downstairs. Just leave it there for five minutes to dry off a bit. You know, it stinks the living room out, and that's just that's just a rattle can. So you have got to be careful with lacquers. If you're by yourself or if you're in a big massive house and you know you can you can isolate the room you're in from everybody else close the door and have everything vented outside and not have the door open for a long period of time like you know in a spare room and close the door for hours then you'll be all right maybe as long as you're protected with the respirator but if not if you're in a three bed semi or a two up two down terrace or something like that or a flat uh the worst thing you can do is if you if you if you a lot of people will work in their bedrooms. So your bedroom is also the work where your workbench is. And that's fine. Some people live in small apartments. They haven't got a lot of space. Uh, or you may be living with your parents or something. So you're still in a bedroom. It's fine. Nothing wrong with that. But yeah, that's the situation where the other thing is if you're working in a room where you have to sleep. You sit there and you wear a respirator while you're spraying. Good lad or good girl. You're keeping your lungs clean. But then a few hours later you go to bed where all the vapors from the lacquers have risen because of you know convection uh, and they're all in the air and you're going to bed and you're just inhaling all those vapors that are still there because you can't really smell them because you've kind of got used to the smell by this point so yeah lacquers are brilliant but you do kind of need to be aware and conscious of the downsides the downsides doodle 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 Mm -hmm. time are we on uh quarter past 10 we'll probably call it quits very soon uh, well, i'm only going for like an hour or so a little bit tonight not a lot it's not gonna be a long stream or anything like that i know you guys have all got work in the morning so or work or school or college or uni or what have you so don't be keeping you up too late diddly bomb diddly bomb diddly bomb <laughs> Now it's taken me about two or three hours to get all these little yellow bits done i've got a few little other bits to do keep in mind this is just the yellow armor there's about three times as much red armor yeah so that's going to be fun what i might do is actually i've not been i should have been doing it already but what i might do is put the arm the armor that goes on the arms actually on the arms i was debating whether to mount some of the armor onto the inner frame on the arms I can do that because I can handle an arm and dry brush it quite easily. On the legs I'm not going to do that because I can't be manhandling the entire leg and hip section uh, sub assembly because it's too much, it's too big, it's too manhandling and also I don't want to unseat, I've glued all the joints but they're not 100% like set in stone so. Uh, LD says I do my spraying in my outhouse at the back of the garage that opens to the back garden, two doors in between the smell sometimes gets in, yep. Absolutely. Go into a body shop. Go into a body shop where they have proper um, sealed spray booths. Where they have massive industrial ventilation systems. Uh, and extractor systems. And where the people inside wear full face masks. Uh, or even full spray suits. Go into a body shop where they've got that. Where it's all sealed and... You know, somebody walks into a spray booth or the spray and they basically fire them on the spot. Go into a body shop and the first thing you'll smell is that smell. The smell of like, you know, lacquers uh, of clear coat and paint smells and lacquer smells because it doesn't matter how good your filtration or ventilation system is, even professional systems, it's still going to escape. It's going to follow you around for ages. Uh, but it's only 1620 here, says Average Modeler. Welcome, by the way, Average Modeler. 
It's only 20 past four. No, it's uh, it's 20 past 10 at night here, I'm afraid. No one else lives in, in my house. I can do anything I want. <laughs> says Osric. Osric has the best of all worlds there because he's got the house all to himself. Which means technically he can walk around butt naked whenever he wants in the summer, which is a boon in the summer, trust me. Uh, but also, he can make all the smells he wants, and nobody's really nobody's really bothered. Uh, girls and dog banned from hobby room for a day after, and I've spray booth respirator, says Tom. Yeah. That's the other thing to be aware of as well. Uh, if you've got kids in the house, don't ever use lacquers. I would just say that straight out. If you've got kids, don't, don't bother. It's not worth the risk. At all. At all. Uh... Because they don't know. You tell a kid not to go in a room where you've been spraying. They're going to go in the room where you've been spraying. They don't understand. They don't know. But also, if you've got animals in the house, if you've got a cat or a dog or a pet or any kind of animals that are wandering around the house, again, you're wearing a respirator when you're... If this is any any paints. You're wearing a respirator when you're spraying. You're protecting your own lungs. But what about the animals in the house? What about the kids in the house? You know, they're, they're breathing that stuff in without respirators. So do be conscious, whatever you're spraying, do be conscious and aware of other people in the house. Unless you're Osric, in which case, walk around, you could spray paint and buck naked and no one would care because no one is there to get any harm. So he can sit there doing the YMCA if he wants, in his Jimmy John's. I don't know where I'm going with that. I'm just going to stop now before I stop people giving giving people images in their minds that they don't want. <sighs> Girls and dogs oh, on that one. I've read that one already. Now I might well try and do a stream again tomorrow. I still have lots of this left to do. I've got all the red armor to do yet. And this is just the dry brushing. On this, I've got another course of dry brushing to go on top of that to get the highlights. And then I've got chipping and everything else. Uh, so I've still got all the red armor to go. So, oh, you can bet your bottom dollar there'll be a stream tomorrow. Uh, but during the day, though, don't forget the tomorrow night is the gross models hang out and no, I just hang out and paint then. That's, that's Peachy and Duncan. Uh, it's gross models um, hang out thing where him and the gross group members of the gross group or his patron supporters or just people in his group can, can join him so uh i won't be streaming tomorrow night of course because that wouldn't be very fair to chris would it see look at the paint blooming out there god it's such an annoyance god damn you games workshop seriously just god damn you to heck and back with you sir heck and back <laughs> If they did dry versions of all of their paints, that would be fantastic. They don't, unfortunately. They do not, unfortunately. Uh, Naked bloke doing the YMCA with a respirator on. Sounds like Borderlands to me, says LD. Yeah, pretty much. Is anybody getting Borderlands 3 tomorrow? Is anybody going to be getting it? I talked about it in the earlier show today. I'm probably not picking it up tomorrow. I want to see what other people think of it. And then I, I may have to wait a little bit anyway. Because I don't need to be spending that much money on stuff like that right now. But yes, anybody picking it up? I see a question. Hang on. Kenneth says, hey, Kenneth. Says, Fox, if a detail upset has a silver metal photo etch piece that is a decal in the kit, is the decal meant to go over the photo etch piece? And if it is, do you prime the photo etch first? Um, if it's like a, is this on a like an aircraft like a dashboard or something the, the hair is DNA proof you built the kit fox oh yeah I actually forgot I've not signed inside anything on this build yet. I'll have to find somewhere I can sign inside like a bit of armour or something um, if you've got photo etch that you have to put a decal on later then yeah, you just need to prime and paint it as, as you regularly would and just treat it as a normal, uh, as you treat it as you would a plastic part. And let me read that again. This is decal in the kit. 
I'm confused. What's the actual part, Kenneth? What are you? Uh, what is it you're working on? Is it? Is the metal part supposed to be an alternative to a decal? Like I know, for example, some aircraft kits come with like a flat, a flat sort of dashboard. No, it's not called the dashboard. Flat dashboard, but you can get a, a, a photo etch one instead that has all the sort of recesses and trim and stuff detailed into it. And then you wouldn't tend to use the decal. You didn't use the photo etch instead. But if you're supposed to put the decal on top of the photo etch, then yeah, just just treat the photo etch, get it on the model, and treat it like any other part of the model. It just needs to be primed and painted, and then the decal goes on top. But it does depend on the, the kit. without knowing the specifics, it depends on the kit what that photo etch part is for example for this for this build i've got some photo etch parts not for this kit but i do have some photo etch things that i'm going to build for the diorama and they need to be they've got decals to go on them so they will be assembled with swearing because i hate building photo etch when you've got to fold things and super glue them and super glue is the worst thing in the world Oh, they'll be swearing uh, and then they'll be primed and painted as normal for priming them you can paint you can prime uh, metallic parts of anything kenneth says if i ever commissioned you fox it would to be a build to be, it would be to build a shiny car you would be the death of me kenneth that would be maximum sadness i charge you a batrillion pounds how much to build a shiny car a batrillion pounds once you figured out how much that is i'll do it for you yeah <laughs> um what i was talking about yes um Yes, yeah, so I've got to the bits I've got to make. I'll have to build them and do all the swearing with the photo etch and the super glue. Then they'll be primed as normal and then painted and decaled. Uh, if you are priming metal parts, um, most primers will do fine. It's not it's not a biggie. However, you're going to get better adhesion if you use a primer that's really specifically designed to work with metals. So, for example, if you've got, a, if you've got, say you built a tank and there's like a little bit of photo etch on a handrail or something, a little bit of photo etch here and there, then if you're priming the whole thing with your UMP or your Badger Steinar Res or whatever your primer of choice is, you'll probably be fine. If it's like a little accent or a little detail up part, you're going to be fine. It'll be fine. It's not the end. If it's a little handle or a lever or an antenna or something, it's going to be no problem because you're not going to handle it regularly. It'll be all right. If though you've got something that it's got more extensive uh, photo etch like for example um let's say the actual thing you've built is completely made of pressed metal like the little bits i've got for for the diorama for this sometimes like accessory kits can be things like you know um sort of think uh, so for some rally car you know some like 124 the rally car sets that come with you can buy like third party accessory sets that come with like jacks and toolboxes and all that kind of stuff and workbenches and things and they're all just sheets of photo etch that you bend into shape and you glue them all together and you paint them for things like that where the whole thing is photo etch you're probably better off using a primer that is designed to, to adhere to metal and for that um obviously there are lots of proper professional or industrial etch primers like for the auto trade and stuff but i wouldn't really recommend those because they're designed for cars and for big things where the focus is not on maintaining little tiny surface details and let's be honest the reason you're building something out of photo etch is because it can have all these little tiny details that can't be molded in plastic like little grills and mesh and things like that so if you build if you're priming photo etch and it's not just a little tiny accent piece or detail um, i would strongly suggest Tamiya's rattle cans because Tamiya's rattle cans are specifically they're excellent primers they're very very thin they go on beautifully they don't go powdery they're, you can't really mess them up you can't go wrong with them and they are designed for plastic wood and metal uh, I can't think of another specific model making primer that is labelled as for metal or metal friendly but Tamiya stuff is and you can be absolutely safe and secure uh, like I say, if you've got a model that's just got a few little bits on it, let's like say you've got a battleship and it's got some railings and maybe in a, an antenna here and there and maybe a deck gun, you're going to be fine. But if you've just built a car and the entire body shell is, let's say, photo etch for some reason, then yeah, you want to go for a proper primer. Uh, the, the Tamiya stuff will just kind of etch, I think it etches a little bit into the metal, a little tiny bit, and that's how it ad ad adheres to it. Uh, in, in the automotive business, you actually use etch primers, which chemically etch themselves into the plastic, uh, the metal, sorry. Typically, that's how auto primers stick to a bare metal body shell. Do -do -do -do. 
bit, bit, but for detail up parts, you'll be fine with whatever pram. If, if it's going to be stuck onto your model or whatever it is, you'll be fine with just your regular primer. Um, do you acrylic gloss coat before enamel panel lining? Asks Sean Youth. Welcome, Sean. Um, I would recommend strongly, if you're going to do panel lining with enamels, if you're going to do a pin wash, then yes, you want to do either a gloss coat or even a satin coat would be fine, as long as you're doing something. Uh, a gloss or satin coat just to make this, the surface a bit smoother so the paint has a chance to flow because you want the paint to be able to flow down the panel line. Now, if you do it on a matte surface, either bare paint, you can do it over, you can do it on bare acrylic paint if you want, or you can do it over a matte varnish surface. The problem you'll find there is that when you put the paint into the recess panel line, it'll go in and then go, and it'll, it'll sort of go into the line and then it'll go and fan out and feather out and you get little spiky edges because it's finding all the little nooks and crannies in the microscopic surface and, and, and going in a little rivulets, little sort of river channels trying to find their own way. So the gloss coat is just to give it a nice smooth surface so it stays in the recess. Uh, you can use, if you, you can use whatever gloss you want. I would recommend if you've painted with acrylics, use an acrylic varnish. Uh, if you put uh, an enamel or lacquer varnish over acrylic paint, it can destroy the paint surface. It might not, but it can do. So I would recommend sticking to it. If you've painted with acrylics, go over with acrylics. If you've painted with lacquers, you can go over with lacquer varnishes. They're even tougher. Uh, or you can go with whatever you want, really. But a satin coat will do as well. What I would tend to do is to save yourself some work, if you've got decals to do, what you may as well do is do a gloss coat, stick your decals on, do your panel lining, uh, and then do either a matte coat or a gloss coat, whatever you want to do to seal all that in before the next step of weathering. You don't have to gloss coat before decals, but if you're going to do lots of decals anyway, and you're going to gloss coat anyway, you may as well do that and then do the decals on the paddle lining. Um, what you can find though is uh, if you don't particularly want to do lots and lots of varnish layers, here's how I've done it in the past. Put all the paint, all the base colours of paint down. So I've painted all my base colours. I've done some. Uh, this is where it gets interesting, depending on your weathering steps. Uh, do all my base colours. Then I'll do a gloss varnish coat. In the past, I've done this. I've done a gloss varnish coat because I know I've got to do some pin washes. So do all my varnish coats. Do some pin washes. Uh, no, let's get that right. Do some a gloss. Do all, I'll start again. Do I've got curry burps. Do all my base colours. So prime it base colors then i do a gloss coat then i do the decals because i may as well do them there and there uh, over a gloss coat may as well do them there then i'll do my panel lining because some of the decals might go over a panel line and you want the panel line to be the panel line ink or the enamel to go over the decal so you want that to be underneath a panel line doesn't just stop where the decal is so uh, and then once i've finished uh, you don't actually have to gloss coat over what I've done in the past is it's quite clever. Different types of weathering like different types of surfaces. So gloss coat, decals, uh, enamel, panel line wash. Uh, and then, if you're careful, uh, I have been over with uh, an oil dot filter or maybe some oil streaking just to tint and discolour the surface a bit. There's two things. Say so a dot, an oil, oil paint dot filter. It discolors the surface and breaks it up and makes it look more uh, real and worn. But also it mats it down. So then the next step might be say streaking or something like that, which prefers a matte surface. But the filter, the oil paint filter, has actually matted the gloss surface down. So I don't need to do a matte coat. So you can mix and match. So you are here instead of gaming with the boys, says TK. I would say as well, TK, you are here instead of gaming with the boys as well. So, ah, ha, ha. yes. What were you playing? What were you playing? If you're playing Destiny, I could have been tempted, but I did promise the guys that I'd come and do a live stream. So, yeah. But you're probably playing some Ubisoft nonsense that I don't like anyway. Uh, me, Chris, and TK uh, started playing Destiny the other week, just to because TK's never played Destiny. So before Destiny Two goes free to play, and and TK can pick a copy up, uh, they've been playing. Uh, oh, we've just finished a chapter of Gears Five. Cool, I haven't got that. I've got Gears Four. I started playing. I started playing Gears Four, uh, but they kept taking the Lancer off me, and I don't like the crappy gun I got. And I was like, I'm bored now, so I got bored of it. Uh, let's have a look. My new one 700 scale Montana has parts that have to be built with photo etch. There is no plastic option in the kit for those parts. Fun times. 
I'm a very slow builder and painter myself, says Kenneth. I think the fastest build and paint job I did was the mini I sent you for, for Christmas, Fox. I will show you that. I have it here. Kenneth sent me this, and it's beautiful. Eh. Kenneth sent me that, dude. And he's absolutely gorgeous. And this was after Kenneth had been painting for like about two weeks. And he's like, I've just started to paint. And I'm like, dude, you're better than me. Shut up, you're better than me now. So, and, and but of course, you can tell it's one of Kenneth's because it's got the lovely little flowers on there. He made these himself. I've actually got, still, still got them, Kenneth. Kenneth did send me a jar of flowers that I've got a very specific purpose. They need to go on a very specific uh, figure. I've got a mini they need to go on. I haven't done them yet. I haven't painted them yet. That's why they're not being used, but I do have those. But yes, Kenneth sent me that. And it's beautiful. 2018, there you go. Absolutely beautiful. I've just noticed, is it a metal figure, Kenneth? Because you've got these things on the bottom, or did you pin it? Is that just pinned on? Doesn't feel like metal, but that's absolutely gorgeous. And you can paint better than me, and that's just like awesome. I love that. I've been painting for a, for a year, and I can paint better than everybody. I love that. That's brilliant. Uh, Rody Hobby says, just say hello to everyone. See you all. Okay. Thanks and thanks for coming in, Rody, and goodbye again. <laughs> yes. Um, let's have a look. Uh, I hear Mr. Primer Surfacer is a new version of Mr. Surfacer, which has something in it that makes it good for priming metal too, says Beckstorm. Ah, possibly. Could be. There are probably other ones out there, but I know Tamiya literally says for plastic and metal on the on the can. Uh, I don't know about Citadel rattle cans. I guess they would because they are rattle can primer. I mean, they are lacquer primers and there are metal things in the, in the, in the Games Workshop range, so I guess they'd be probably good for it. It doesn't say, but they're probably fine. <laughs> Uh, the, the big difference with things like uh, miniature primers and things for doing miniature painting is miniature painting, you don't tend to do a lot of masking or anything else. It's you kind of brush painting. So, yes. Uh, we have been thoroughly inept, says TK, playing Chapter of Gears 5. TK, can you put decal strands photo etch or prime it first? Are you not going to paint the photo etch though, Kenneth? I'm gonna guess. I'm gonna guess if it's like a if it's like a cockpit dashboard, you probably still want to prime it just to give the decal some sort of surface. It'd probably be f if it's just say like a if because if what I'm imagining is it's like a cockpit dashboard where you can have a flat photo etch panel. And you can put a decal for all the little dials and stuff over the top, so you don't technically need to paint it. Uh, you you don't need to, if that's the situation. Then I say you wouldn't need to you wouldn't need to prime it, but you probably should. Also, the last thing you want to do is put the decal on and realise it's not quite a tight fit and you've got bits of photo etch sticking through. So it might be worth just to paint it anyway. Uh, Beck Storm says, raw photo etch looks good though. You know what, at some point I'm going to do, um, not really photo etch, but um, one thing I will do at some point is get, say, a gumpler and just paint it grey, prototype style. Because there's something about, you get like, you see... Um, you go to like the you know the the, the uh, Shitsuoka game show. You see the footage from there, the hobby show, and they see all these like not yet released, still in prototype stage Gumpler, and they're like often three D printers. They're a little rough around the edges, but they're all just grey. And I keep thinking to myself, you know what? At some point, I'm going to have to make a Gumpler, just like an HG or something, or a a, a no grade, a no grade or something, and just basically <laughs> paint it grey, prototype style, put prototype on it. Robert Taylor says, "Bye all, thanks for coming in, Robert. Thanks for watching." Hope you've had fun. There'll be more. Don't worry. Uh, TK says at least gloss coat before decals uh, about the photo etch. If it's photo etch though, it's already shiny and not and smooth. So I'm not sure. I did I did say though uh, what I, I did ask Kenneth what the part is. Kenneth, what is the part you the photo etch part you're talking about? Just so we can get an idea. Uh, photo etch has gunk on it, so wash it and then gloss. I'd say. I don't know. Did Fox, did you get the metal parts for the Sazabi or did I dream it? Uh, no, I've not got the metal parts for the Sazabi. It's just the base kit. Uh, I'm not the best with metal parts, so I, I wasn't going to go for a, a, a detail up kit. Also, that's expensive. And I didn't want George... The whole point of this is, is it's, a, it's a reward for George. I didn't want to say to George, hey, will you buy the photo etch kit? Because he, he would, but I don't want him to do it. This is supposed to be a treat for him. So it's on my dime. So uh, I thought about it, but they're not cheap. And for the for the effect I could do with them, because I'm not very good with metal, I thought, nah, I'll just I'll leave them off. 
because it's it's not it's going to be a it's not going to be made to look like a Cesar B anyway. It's going to look like uh, it's going to look a bit like a mech rather than a Cesar B and a mobile suit. So deliberately not too fussed. Folks, your rinse water is looking like a nice glass of lead. It does, doesn't it? Have you ever noticed this? How when you've got your, your your cup for your painting, it always looks like something delicious. It either looks like Depending on what cup, it either looks like this, like lemonade, like this looks like a nice glass of, rub, a nice cup of uh, Robinson's orange, or maybe barley fruit, summer barley fruits, barley sugar. Uh, Kenneth says, if you can smell it, you will die. <laughs> yes, <laughs> it's true. I've said that before. If you can smell it, about lack of paints, if you've got a mask on and you can smell it, you'll die. You will die. Um, yeah, it looks like Robinson's orange, but then if you're doing like browns and stuff, your wash water always looks like the most delicious coffee. My wash, my whenever I've got like a coffee and I'm painting like earthy tones, for some reason the wash always looks nicer than the coffee I'm drinking. I don't know why. If you're doing reds, you end up with like a sort of strawberry milkshake. It's great. I love it. Uh, the detail of parts are intimidating, says LD. A super glue on a painted kit scares me. I hate metal parts and super glue. It just terrifies me. Chris at Gross Models. Hello, Chris. It says, isn't it bedtime? Uh, in a bit. In a bit. Beckstorm says, dude, I was literally just typing. Why are you dunking your paintbrush into a glass of orange juice? <laughs> it does look like orange juice, doesn't it? Let's give it a taste. No, let's not. Let's not do that. Uh, 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 Kenneth asks TK if he finished his horn, and TK said he did. If you don't know, uh, do go and look at uh, TK's Facebook page. Uh, TK built the, uh, I can't remember who the, TK, who was the kit made by? It's the Horton H0228, H0224, the, 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 the Delta Wing concept that was only ever built, I think they built one and the bits of it were still around. And this model is incredible. It's got this beautiful, every, every single detail is reproduced, even the inner frame, all the spurs and spars on the wing and all the inter interior frame on the wings there, all the bits and mechanical bits. And then it comes with a clear, um, fuselage or partly clear fuselage so you can see inside but rather frustratingly they make it out of clear plastic but frosted so you can't really see inside and then so you have to basically paint it so you get all this detail and you build it and then you cover all that up and it hides it's a shame really uh, but it's a beautiful model so he did finish it uh tk says back be right back gonna try and pry the tablet from the missus hands bigger screen is better for the watchings well, we're actually going to wrap up in a minute tk so don't worry too much but good luck uh let's have a look and see right so we've got this evening we've had these done i'll move this out of the way we've dry brushed a very quick coat of avalanche sunset on these these are just a few of the parts we've got two other foams i've got about eight big things to do like the fuel tanks and stuff and i've got a small selection of little things like uh, thruster bells and stuff to do as well uh george is in hey george just turning up at the end i'm afraid but welcome welcome look many many things on sticks many things on sticks um so i've got to do all those so we'll be back again tomorrow more once i've done all that i've got all the red armor too so i need to get all the red armor then get it all on uh, on sticks and do all the same for the red armor there's a lot more red armor than there is yellow armor once that's done i then need to go in with a secondary color so in this case it would be with yellow it would be uriel yellow on the red it would be not sure yet it might be evil sun scarlet perhaps uh, and then once that's done i need to come back in with a third highlight color for the yellow will be phalanx yellow for the red would possibly be something like squig orange i said squig and cy reynolds would be doing a little squee if he was watching but i'm not sure yet um so there's still like three more stages of dry brushing to go and that's just on the armor <laughs> george says oh dang i should go back to playing borderlands is that borderlands 3 is it any good um so yeah we've got plenty more live stream content to come tomorrow i'll do one during the day well i might i may well do keep an eye on the facebook and the twitters um i've got something might be happening tomorrow but i just might stop me doing it but if i can i'll do a live stream tomorrow during the day i'm not doing one in the evening because it's chris's stream in the evening obviously chris pimp your stream in the hangout because i've forgotten the name of it and all the links and everything um so chris's team tomorrow night is, is hangout and whatever uh but yeah that's gonna do you for tonight i think so thank you for joining on this little little extra stream only an hour and a half little extra little bit of stream uh we shall be back possibly tomorrow i, I might not always get a chance to 
put up on the I might do these like very last minute so if you're not already subscribed make sure you're subscribed to this channel uh, and if you haven't already done it, hit the notification bell that's next to the subscription button or the, it might just say subscribed or I've got 20 trillion followers, whatever. There might be a little notification bell somewhere on there. Click that because that should then hopefully send you a notification whenever I do start a new live stream. Um, so I might not always get a chance to pop up a thing on Facebook saying, hey, we're going to start in 10 minutes. So just stay tuned, click the notification bell uh, and keep your eye open. I'll probably do one during the day tomorrow if I can. So stay tuned. We'll see how we go. But until next time, I shall say, thank you very much for watching. Uh, we've got more to come. Take care of yourselves. I'll bring that back so you can look at that because it's lovely. Uh, take care of yourselves. Go make something awesome. Go be awesome. You there. You there. Be awesome. I can see you with my finger. My finger sees all. I have an all-seeing finger. And I will say until next time, and hopefully I don't screw this up, until next time, adios amoebas. Ha, ha, ha.